thank you all very, very much for being here tonight and eat your meals. I hope you had fun. I hope the food was good. I want to thank a couple of folks uh, who without them this wouldn't be possible tonight. Uh, first guy's not here. Uh, Art Ablito, the Pasta King, who's been doing this now, is the 23rd Pasta event he's done for me in Lake County. And he couldn't be here tonight, but give it up for him anyway. And let's thank Philippe for being here in his, uh, in his stead. Thank you very much. Good job. And a special thanks to Steve Wyatt. Uh, who's the guy who picks up the e-waste out in front. And as you know, we've been doing that for quite a while now, making these uh, events as close to zero waste as we possibly can, and giving people an opportunity to bring in their e-waste uh, so they can get rid of it and know that it's going to be disposed of appropriately. It's not going to end up in an open burn pit in some third world country uh, making a bunch of people very, very sick. And, there's a need for this because I'm told that as of tonight we have a million two hundred thousand pounds of e-waste that we've collected in these pasta dinners since we've been doing it. So that's, that's good stuff. And in addition to that, as you know, uh, Steve always donates back reconditioned computers for any nonprofits who show up with a letter. Now I'm told there's three or four computers here tonight, there's only one letter. So if there's another nonprofit and you've got a letter or you can figure out how to get one to Mary Jane real quick, uh, I'm sure we can work something out. Mary Jane is, is, right, is right here. A big hand for the 4-H kids who are volunteering to do that. That's such a great program and it means so much for uh, the community and for them, uh, not only now, but in the long run. It's just real proud to uh, be able to say that they're at our event tonight. And I want to thank uh, Madeline Lyons. Where's Madeline? Who did the sponsorships for tonight. Madeline, thank you very, very much. Kathy Windrum and Jane McKnight for the silent auction. Thank you, guys. And how about a big hand for the guy who is up in Lake County all the time uh, when I can't be here uh, working hard for everybody, Brad Alvarado. And these fundraisers don't just happen uh, by themselves. You're a big part of it, obviously, but someone's got to do all the organizing and make sure everything comes together, and that's Mary Jane Bowker. Mary Jane, thank you. of this if it weren't for uh, my partner and the person that uh, I love very, very much and she's just absolutely wonderful with my wife, Jan. <laughs> I, I want to take a couple of minutes just to chat about some things. Um, as I said, this is the 23rd time that we've had this event. And we waited uh, a year before we did it. So uh, I've been representing, fortunate to have been representing Lake County now uh, for quite some time, both in the State Senate uh, and in, in Congress. And I can tell you, uh, it's a high honor for me, and I enjoy it, and I love it, and I appreciate all you guys. And uh, together we've been able to uh, accomplish some pretty good things. And as you know, as in anything, you always have your highs and you always have your lows. And um, we've had both. And I, I, I venture to say that you probably all agree with me, because I've heard it three or four times tonight already. Uh, people come and say, boy, it's got to be frustrating back there and doing what you're doing. And I know that everybody's feeling a lot of frustration right now. And I can tell you, you don't have a corner on the market. 
Uh, you get to stay here in this beautiful county and be with your community and with your friends and be frustrated. I'm the guy that gets on the airplane on Monday morning, flies back to Washington, and has to deal with all that stuff. So when it comes to frustration, you don't have anything on, on, on me. Uh, but I can tell you, it's not good. And it shouldn't be like that. There's, we should be able to get a lot more things done than we're getting done uh, right now. But that doesn't mean you stop trying. Because the challenges are great, our country's great, the people are great, and it's worth the fight. And we need to make sure uh, that we work hard to make sure that uh, the United States of America uh, gets what it deserves and the people back home get what they deserve. And we've got to keep working and keep working together. And as long as I'm working with you, it makes it a heck of a lot easier. when it's not Lent, and I can enjoy the great products that we make in this, in this district. So how about, a, how about a big hand for the winemakers and the winemakers? Lake County wine is second to none, and you can go any place in the country and most places in the world and find it, and it's absolutely fantastic, and these are the people uh, who have in large part make it happen. So, thank you all for being here tonight. So, notwithstanding all that frustration and the divisiveness that's going on in Washington, D.C., it's important that we all come together and get some things done uh, for our, our great country. And as I say, uh, the stakes are too high not to do that and not to work uh, towards that uh, goal. And I'd like to talk about a couple of the things that I, I think are important, think uh, are worth fighting for, and a couple of things that I'm working on. Uh, right now, no question about it, jobs is number one. We need to make sure uh, that we have good jobs uh, for American people, to make sure that uh, we have uh, 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 the, the jobs there that will allow people to not only contribute to the country, but make a good living. Um, pay their taxes, buy a house, send their kids to college, and save for the retirement years. That is the American dream, and it takes jobs to make sure uh, that that happens. But right now, there's a huge, huge threat, and something that we all need to come together on, and that's to make sure that the middle class is strong in this country, and that we have those jobs for the middle class. That's how America became great the middle class. It was the middle class that built this great country, that put the uh, sweat and the blood and the tears into making sure uh, that we are the great country that, that we are. The veterans, uh, many of whom are, are, are here tonight, the folks that put it all uh, on, on the line. And, and I'm afraid, I, I'm afraid that our middle class is taking a huge hit right now. Prices keep going up, wages stay flat. And that's not a good situation. And if you look at what's going on in the country, you know, you, you think about this, uh, since 2009, the uh, CEO pay in this country has gone up 40%. And I'm all for everybody's pay going up, but everybody's pay should go up. Because the average working person is making less today than we were making in 1999. And that is not good. And that spells disaster for that important middle class. And I've said it here before, and you all know it. If, if, if it's not for the middle class, we're not the great country that we are. Henry Ford said it back when he was making his Model T's. He said, if I don't pay my people a decent salary, there's going to be no one to buy my Model T's. It's the middle class that keeps the country going. The working man and the working woman. And that's why we've got to invest in jobs and make sure that we have a strong middle class in this country. And I think there's three areas that are absolutely important to make sure that that happens. Uh, and, and, and certainly, stuff that the government can absolutely help with. One is an investment in infrastructure. And you don't have to drive very far in anybody's community to see that we need to pave our roads, we need to widen our roads, we need to improve our intersections and our overpasses, water delivery, uh, you name it, we have infrastructure needs in this country. And every billion dollars we spend on infrastructure is 30,000 new jobs. 
and it's the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, once that road is built, once the overpass is, it, it is finished, once the school uh, is built, those are there. That infrastructure is there for our generation and future generations. And it's important that we make that investment uh, in our infrastructure. The, also, right now is the time for us to invest in energy, renewable energy in this country. It is so important. We spend two hundred thousand dollars a minute purchasing foreign energy. Two hundred thousand dollars a minute. And 25%, 25 billion dollars a year goes to Persian Gulf countries. And I don't think I have to tell you, they're all not our friend. And why in the world should we be sending uh, that type of money to other countries when we can be investing it right here? And the, the uh, renewable energy uh, uh, community can be to us today what the oil, gas, and coal industry was for us yesterday. And it's important that we make that investment. And you don't even have to get out of Lake County and see how important it is. You know, you can go down to Hidden Valley Lake and look at the solar panels uh, that they have, the solar field that they have there. And, uh, and, and I think it's 3,500 uh, homes that that is able to, uh, to uh, generate power for just in that area. Or look up at the geysers. Look at the, the jobs and the money uh, that is coming into this county and not withstanding the renewable energy, uh, which is better energy, uh, that's being used here and, and other places. This is important stuff. We need to make the commitment, uh, and we need to make those types of investments. And also, the third thing is education. Uh, we need to make sure that our kids have the education they need so they can be the workforce uh, for our future. They're going to be competing globally for the jobs that they have. And we need to double down and make sure they have the best possible education and they have every absolutely every opportunity to compete for those jobs. Now, I, I probably don't need to say that here uh, because I think Lake County gets it. Uh, you know how important that is. Uh, I visit the schools here. I see the resources that go in, both the financial resources and the human resources. I know the commitment uh, that Lake County has made to education. And when I was making notes to myself this afternoon of things that I wanted to talk about, when I got to the education part, I thought back here a couple, two or three years ago, I, I was uh, honored to be able to give the commencement speech at Kelseyville High School. And you know, I was really, really impressed with the kids here. I mean, you, you know this, they're, they're your kids. You, you get it. Uh, but when they were reading off the scholarship winners, uh, the only thing that was as impressive as the list of accomplishments that these graduating seniors had on their resume uh, were the number of people in the community who came forward to create those scholarships. And that's because Lake County understands how important education is. And you can see it with the new community college. The, ad, the, the um, um, article in the paper the other day, the six new scholarships that were created uh, by uh, caring individuals in the community uh, who know that education is our future. And uh, it's very, very evident here, but I just don't think you can say it enough because it's uh, uh, absolutely that important. So give yourself a big hand uh, for recognizing how important these things are and the commitment that you make in the investment. So notwithstanding the divisiveness, I'm going to continue to go back and, and work hard. Uh, when I'm back here and meeting with you, it recharges my batteries. Uh, it helps me go back and, and, and fight the good fight. And notwithstanding the divisiveness, there's still an accomplishment every once in a while uh, that comes about uh, because of your support and, and, and that work. And I just want to mention a couple uh, that we, that we, and I say we because it's collective, uh, uh, when I get something done in Washington, it's uh, because the whole community is getting something done. And there were uh, three things that just happened this year that I, I want to uh, mention. One is uh, the Stornetto property over on the coast. Uh, I don't know if you read the article on these. Things. I started working with the community at Point Arena uh, to develop uh, that protection for that absolutely beautiful uh, part of, of, of our world. 
and the community was 100% behind uh, protecting that area for future uh, generations. I had legislation. We got the bill right up to about the five-yard line. But, uh, it, it didn't happen. Uh, then redistricting came, and uh, I handed that bill off to uh, my new colleague, uh, uh, Jared Huffman, who now represents that area. And fortunately for Jared, and for all of us, he's on the Committee of Jurisdiction. The bill got out of the committee. Uh, it was on the way to the Senate, and the President got tired of waiting also. So under the Antiquities Act, he signed the law permanent protection for that Stornetta Point Arena by uh, area. I also uh, want to uh, just chat about it because not only is it, is it an accomplishment, but I think it, uh, it, it shows the importance of something critical to, uh, to Lake County. And uh, everybody knows about the threat from the fog muscles and how devastating that can be and how costly uh, it can be. Uh, a quagga mussel infestation in any local waterway can cost millions and millions and millions uh, of dollars. And we've had a, a lot of trouble uh, getting the federal government to recognize that quagga mussels are in fact an invasive species and need to be dealt with. And I was able to pass legislation uh, that got uh, that will require that the federal government take the steps necessary to recognize the quagga as an invasive species and get the help uh, that we need. And along with that, uh, I started the Invasive Species Caucus uh, with a Republican colleague uh, from Michigan, and we've been able to shine a lot of uh, focus on this uh, problem, which is a problem for Lake County. Well, Lake Clear Lake is, a, is the number one at-risk waterway in the United States uh, when it comes to progress. So we've got to get on this thing, and we've got to fix it. So that was important uh, for, uh, for our area. And then uh, the legislation for uh, TBI and uh, PTS uh, for our military veterans coming back. You know, it, it used to be that all, the only way they could get help was to go on campus to a veterans facility. But a lot of our veterans need additional help or a different kind of help. And uh, Pete Sessions and I, who was, Pete's a Republican from Texas, so if anybody says that I don't work across party lines, uh, you know, he was three times the Republican uh, Congressional Campaign Committee Chairman. So uh, by definition, the most partisan Republican in Congress. Uh, and he and I joined forces and got this bill passed, and it's now the law where veterans will be able to get treatment not only on campus, but off campus, if that's the best treatment. Uh, that they Today. She was at the Stornetta uh, Point Arena uh, unveiling or ribbon cutting, and this flag was there, and she, she brought it for me because I wasn't able to be there. I was in, I was in Washington. But it, it reminded me, the other thing that I was able to accomplish this year is um, we made a change in the law as to where and how the Department of Defense purchases their, their American flags. Uh, and it came to me from a constituent uh, in our district uh, that has a company that makes American flags. And they make American flags here in America with... <laughs> with materials that are made here in America. Now, it seems to me that that's a no-brainer. And I was talking, I was touring the, the, the uh, factory and um, I said, so do all those flags that fly over the Capitol that I, I give out? I said, you, did you make all those? He said, no. He said, no, the only sure thing are the flags that the Veterans Administration uh, has. Uh, the Veterans Administration is required to purchase flags that are made in America. And I said, well, and the Department of Defense, right? You know, our, our troops aren't fighting under a flag that was made in China, are they? And he said, well, you know, it's, it, it very may well be that they are, that it's only the Veterans Administration. So 
Frank Lopiano, a Republican uh, colleague and a friend of mine from New Jersey, I went to him, he's on the Appropriations Committee. I said, I've got a bill that says every flag that the Department of Defense purchases has to be made in America. The material is made in America. So there's a lot of good stuff going on, uh, and we've got a lot of work to do, uh, we've still got to do, uh, we still have to do immigration reform, and the fact that that hasn't happened yet is very, very tough. Someone mentioned today uh, my efforts on gun violence prevention. We talked about it a little bit last year. You know, it just, it, it seems that everybody knows I'm a hunter, I'm a gun owner, I'm strong on the Second Amendment, but for gosh sakes, there is no reason in the world that uh, there aren't background checks for people who buy uh, firearms. <laughs> it's the same but the fact of the matter is, uh, in some states, you can go to a gun show, you can go online, you can buy a gun without getting a background check. And anybody who believes that it's okay for criminals or somebody who's dangerously mentally ill to be able to buy a gun has got problems. And that is just a no-brainer, absolutely, if you're mentally ill or if you're a criminal, you shouldn't get a gun. And they just had a study that they did, because people say, well, people who buy get criminals, when they buy guns, they don't go through some place where they have to have a background check. Well, the flat, easy answer to that is BS, because they just did a study of all of the uh, uh, background checks that are, that are uh, performed, and every day, every day, 17 felons are stopped from buying a gun because of the background check. There are over 50 domestic abusers every day that are stopped from buying a gun because of background checks. And here's one for you. 24 uh, fugitives, people who are, uh, are running from the law, on the land from the law, are stopped every day because of the background checks from buying a gun. So I've got a bill that says if you buy a gun through an advertised sale, you got a background check. It's a bipartisan bill. There's 189 co-authors on the bill, and we can't get a vote in the House. It's absolutely crazy that this is happening. 91% of the people of the country believe that people who buy guns should uh, undergo a background check. More people believe in that than like Italian food and vacations, and more people believe in that than believe in capitalism. So if the bill ought to come up for a vote, and we ought to get it done, we ought to get it done. So we've got a lot of work to do. We've got a lot of work to do. I thank you for being here. And my commitment to you is I'll keep going back. I'll keep working hard to make sure uh, that we get the best uh, for this country, uh, for this country that it deserves. And uh, we do deserve the best. It's the best country in the world. So thank you all for being here. Thank you.